now we're actively live. <laughs> Hello again! Uh, that said, um, let's get through our normal starter stuff. Uh, so welcome to the inaugural session of Embers of Life. We're transitioning over to this campaign due to a technical hardware issue that saw the data from our last game fall into the ether. Um, adding to that, we're opting for a fully homebrewed world, a uh, cross-collaborative storytelling adventure where our players have as much agency to world build as the Dungeon Master does. Um, as always, the Embers of Life crew invite you to join in our sessions live most Wednesdays, 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern, as long as we're not having these technical difficulties keeping us from only playing one month at a time. Come in, comment, heckle, and use channel points to affect the outcomes of the game. For those watching this after the fact, make sure to like, subscribe, rumble, whatever's appropriate for the medium in which you found us on. And of course, if you're subscribed here on, on Twitch, we very much do appreciate the support. Two final bits of information before we shoot into our first session. Uh, first, we have dropped our first module out to the DMs Guild. If you like our content, head out to the links below. And make sure to grab a copy of Teleportation Troubles from the DMs Guild. We'll be continuing this series over time with the intent of having a full campaign story that takes you from level 1 to 20. Second, as you can see, our overall setup has changed. Uh, that spot in the upper right hand corner where it states, that the states the campaign name and has one of our logos will actually be used for guest slots. Uh, have an interesting idea that you'd like to try out in a session or two? Hop into Discord, chat with us, and let's see what we can do. Uh, that said, any pre-notes that you guys want to get into before we hit the first scene? There's nothing for me to recap! <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess you'll just have to post-cap that. Uh, spoilers for my character. <laughs> You're welcome to recap what happened in the last game before this. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think it's relevant. No, but just if you feel really desperate to recap. Uh, hammer falls, <laughs> all the zombies die. That is true. That is true. So, our scene starts with a black screen. A small note in the corner reads, Cursed Lands Exploratory Operation, First Foray, Day 9. The camera pans down from the starless void that is the sky here in these barren wastes and slowly comes to view a small encampment of wagons and tents, with small groups milling about in various areas. Focusing further on a small group, sitting somewhere leisurely about a rocky outcropping that circles a small enclosed lava pool no more than a few feet in diameter, the only source of warmth in the cold and unfamiliar terrain. Uh, please go ahead and give your names, descriptions, and any obviously expressed feelings that could be noted just through observation of your characters. I I am I am Countess Matai Vadai, and 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 am I still there? Yep, sounds yeah. like you're kind of going in and out. Uh, that's unfortunate. And 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 and, uh, and I am a rich noble from uh, from from the east. I wear fi I, I wear fine dresses and and jewelry, uh, ma you know the makeup, hair done nicely, and I'm far far out of my element out here in the wastes. I am not pleased by 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 my uh, by my existence here. I'd much rather be back in my library re reading from my large collection of books and practicing alchemy and testing spells but the, but the, but there are problems that require my attention i will have to make sacrifices all right who'd go, like to go next uh i guess i will um i am baron ardell I 200 and let me double check the actual age. Oops. Yeah, 210 year old Eladrin. Um, very, very 
plain by any sense of the word. I'm a baron only because I've been on the wall so long that I have too much experience not to be in charge. I dress in very simple black and brown clothes, um, dark and muddled so that I can blend in with the uh, the natural terrain, as you see, of volcanic ash and gray. Um, and, you know, very basic. It's a very basic design. Think of a lord without a lot of money, because I put all my money into my defenses, um, which are very well handled by my captains. <laughs> Not much to say about him. He's a very plain Eldrin. Okay. And if you see his picture when it comes up, he's dark and ashy because that's the world we live in. No oh, bright, fancy colors. So I am playing uh, novice Helia Fireforge. Uh, she is a dwarf uh, who lives in the city of Hammerfall. Uh, she's pretty tall for a dwarf, uh, just under five feet tall. Uh, very solidly built, even for a dwarf, uh, due to long years of martial training. Uh, she's got green eyes and lots of coppery red hair that's kind of bound up in a big, single, thick braid that's most of the way down her back. Um, when she's in combat, she wears finely crafted dwarven armor uh, with a ram's head helmet uh, with you know full horns and everything. On one pauldron is emblazoned the symbol of her order, the, the Order of the Sundered Ruby. It's a large red gem, kind of with like spiderweb cracks in it, on a black field. And then on the other shoulder, she has the sigil, uh, hammer, and anvil of Moradin. Um, outside of combat, such as like right now, she's generally going to be wearing like maroon and black robes of her order. Uh, but if she ever gets to like go out on the town to like a party or something, she's gonna pick the fanciest, brightest colored dress you can imagine. Perfect and great. Okay. And I am playing unit six dash one R dash one dash seven or grit. Um, I am an automaton. Um, kind of my uh, outer chassis, as it were. Uh, my uh, protective layer is kind of a blend of like a coppery uh, and brass-like material. Um, I wear a uh, long coat, kind of a like, uh, black color trimmed with uh, brown and a vest um, and a wide brimmed hat. Uh, my ocular sensors are glow a slight shade of blue. Um, you might find me uh, kind of trying to craft something every now and then, because that, uh, as it turns out, I don't know how old I am. Uh, I was, well, we'll get to that, how that happened. But uh, uh, I like to build things. And... Um, kind of see my uh, set of tools on my hip and on the other side you see a uh, well we're looking a uh, bit of metal on the end of a uh, nice wooden handle and we'll see what that does okay <laughs> and I believe our druid's not actually in this scene is that correct uh no we actually I am a representative of the local CLEO office and I am here to make sure that the team stays on time and, more importantly, on budget. Fantastic. <laughs> so I like your choice of a uh, of photo there. There we are. So, thus far, the evening is just getting started. Camp was only set up a few hours ago. After a grueling 12-hour 12 12-hour 12 march in the wasteland, as dinner is being prepared and you know that that might be taking a bit of time, you've all decided that on this night, 
you're finally comfortable enough with each other to begin sharing stories of how you became part of this torchbearer exploratory expedition. All right. Uh, Baron Ardell, would you like to go first? Uh, I mean, my reason for being here is, uh, I don't really want to talk about it, but things didn't go well with my property. Um, yeah, I have nothing left to return to, so I've sort of, uh, consign myself to dying out here as opposed to dying back with the other stuck up nobles that failed to protect their lands well I suppose that's why you and I are both out here yeah uh, 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 after all we were left with plenty of resources and nothing really to spend them on we might as well do as much damage out, out here as we can yeah, I'm trying real hard not to blame you. <laughs> Everything was fine till you showed up. Well, if you had paid your light, your light bills, then then perhaps the torchbearers would have provided aid much much sooner. But you thought you had it taken care of all by yourself. Yep. Uh, as as they say back at home. Hubris is one's undoing. Where I come well, from, Baron, they say chatty countesses shut up. Well, Baron, like my, my granddad always said, bad situation is like a bad ale. Best to drink it fast so you don't taste it long and then prepare for a bad night. And maybe next time you ought to check the label. Uh, a curious saying. How does that apply? Okay. If we're I guess if we're, that works. If we're lucky, we may be able to recover and recover something valuable, at, or maybe some information about the enemy that we are fighting. Maybe we can find something that can truly push them back forever. That well, what, nice. what I mean, Baron, is maybe it's not as bad as you're making it out to be. Hmm. Pretty bad. Yeah. I, I guess probably help you to understand what drove us to help fund this stupid expedition. Flashback, flashback. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> uh, Matai pulls out a bottle of, of Jinka, a beetroot liquor, and and passes it and, and opens it and, pa and passes it around the campfire as we move to our flashback. The camp scene fades, a note appearing in the corner reading sometime prior to the expedition, Ardhel, defensive estate. A cold wind howls across the barren land, cracks in the earth flank the slight road that winds its way towards one of the defensive estates bordering the wall of light. A coach trundles along that road at a leisurely pace, pulled by large, scaled, lizard-like creatures. As it pulls up to the estate, a carriage door opens, and out steps the familiar figure of Matai. She stands before a large set of double doors, dimly lit in the cold, by a single, nearly embering torch. She, she, she gathers a... And she picks up a small book from the, from the seat of the coach, the only object that she carried within it. Uh, co uh, coach, coachman, could you please bring my luggage in for me? Yes, madame. Thank you. And, and he scoots she, around to do so. As he's busy with that, she steps forward to the front door, or the double doors. Um, I imagine that there's a knocker there, so and, so and so she is going to use that, wrapping it three times sharply. 
The knock echoes within the hall. Double check names of uh my guys here. Uh what was my captain's names? Uh Bethrel. Oh, written down. Bethrel, that's it. Bethrel, can you go get the door? It's probably that stuck up tax collector I was told about. <laughs> yes, my lord. And he will head for the door and open it up. I uh, and he'll he'll look out into okay. I'm assuming it's a courtyard. Somewhat. So it, it leads out to a basically similar barren wasteland that uh, you guys were sitting in, sands the lava cracks. Those don't flow into this side of uh, the country. Okay, uh, so he'll, he'll step out into the, the courtyard area and he'll, he'll bow to Matai. Greetings, Countess. Baron Ardell sends his greetings. Please, allow me to escort you to him now. Can I take uh, your cloak? Absolutely. Thank you. She uh, she steps in and lets him take the cloak, shrugging it off of her shoulders. He'll kind of like put it over his his arm like a you know waiter kind of situation, mm -hmm. and he'll he'll lead Matai into the uh, dining area. All right. My lord, the countess is here to see you. I uh, slowly stand to attention. Salutations, Baron Ardell. Greetings, Countess Matai. I'm sorry you had to be dragged out here so far. I assumed Count Cadewall or would have uh, been able to deal with this, but... Well, uh, well in, in recent years, he hasn't been able to handle much. Yeah, he wasn't like that when he was a kid. Don't know where we went wrong with him. Anyways, enough insulting my lord. Uh, <laughs> come on in. Um, I prepared some food. You'll forgive me if it's nothing fancy, but we have limited rations to work with, and we were planning a war council once I'm done uh, addressing your concerns with my property. I am honored by your hospitality. So I will, you know, very courteously point her towards the dining room and start walking that way with her. Ba basically offer her my arm like I'm supposed to, according to court traditions. Mm -hmm. To she, escort her into... Yeah, she, ex she accepts, as, as is customary. Yep. And I, um, of course, will uh, take up a guard position uh, behind them. As will I. Excellent. All right. So we'll get to the table. Um, I'll. Ardell will pull your chair out. Let you one. sit down. Walk around to himself. Signal to my guards that they can take a seat. Or to That's my it. captains. Sorry, I don't have guards. I am my guard. I mean, technically, we we do the job as so. well. What brings you to my estate this evening as I proceed to pick up some cheese mm -hmm. or whatever we have? I don't know. I don't think we discussed what I actually have access to. It's yeah, probably like really cool. whatever you'd like. Well, knowing me being a frugal person, it's probably like some gruel and maybe uh, or not rice if rice is a thing. Just maybe. a very a very basic staple starch with some veggies and a little bit of meat mixed into it. Yeah. Pro like like pro probably some uh, some mushroom bread and uh and an insect steak. Yeah, just whatever is available. It's low quality food, cheap food because I put my money elsewhere. Mhm. Mm uh, meanwhile, you see me kind of uh savoring the flavor because uh I'm out in the field a lot, so I <laughs> I'm like you're just happy is, to have this is something, something I don't off. have often, so. Yeah, so I'll take a bite of some of my food while I wait for you to tell me uh, your grievance. Before, I, uh, well, well, before, well, before we start, 
why don't we why why don't we make each other more amenable amenable to each other and she and and uh and she produces uh she's been holding a uh the the jug of jinka from the other scene <laughs> um this is this is this is a uh export from my holding i hope you like it i will reach over for the bottle if you offer it to me mm -hmm. yes. pop the cap yes. that's that's strong yes it has uh, it, it, it smells it, it has an earthy almost petrichor scent to it which is almost immediately overpowered by the burning of high-grade alcohol. I will... <laughs> Sorry. I will pour a small amount in everyone's glass, mm -hmm. um, then recap it and set it down on the table. Do not be offended if we don't drink a lot. Um, we've got work to do after this meeting, and I'd rather everyone be sharp. Of course. Um, so, so, so I know that you are a busy man. So I will get straight to the point. I, uh, I have been, I have been notified that that your 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 town has not been has not been paying its light bills. And of course, and and of course, if those are not paid in full, we aren't. We will not be able to. We will not be able to provide for your outpost. Look, I don't know what kind of scam is being run back with the high flute nobles, but my money goes towards my estate. This place is the front line. I've been fighting these fire tucks since before the wall went up. I know where I need to spend my money, and it's right here. If you want to collect money from a bunch of arrogant, pricky nobles, I can give you a list of barons within a couple hours' ride either direction that would be happy to spend all kinds of money to gain favor. I'm just here to do my job. I... I, I know that you are fairly new to your position as a baron, but I I don't think you understand ex exactly why I'm here. Uh, You're here I, to take uh, money that could be put on my wall. Yes. Well, I I am I'm here as an as an illuminator for the torchbearers. Which, which is, which is business that doesn't exactly have anything to do with nobility itself. And, and, and as an illuminator, I, I'm here. I'm here to make sure that your holding is. Oh, uh, what's the word? It's as protected as it can be. The torchbearers are are able to provide an alliance. And 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 ensure that aid will come will come to you in 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 the, in the case that the uh, that the fire touched attack or breach the wall. We all, we are also responsible for making sure that making sure that the trade routes are safe, and without that, the food that you are eating right now will not come to you. You like to eat, don't you? This food is provided for me by the Baron, or by the Count Cadewall. He and handles all of that stuff for me. Well, he hasn't been handling this. So go to him and ask him for your money. The thrill, what explain to this young noble here how we spend our money here. Bethril here, he's my guard captain. He handles the defenses. I give him a very healthy sum of money every month to keep these walls in top shape and our <laughs> guards well fed and their equipment maintained. Oh, uh, yes, right. Uh, Lady Bataille, um, we spend most of our money on equipping our 
soldiers and making sure that they are fed and able to patrol the walls to make sure that the fire touched stay on their side of the wall. Uh, we also need to maintain the, the barrier as much as possible um, and make sure that the perimeter is secure. Um, so we, with, with all due respect, I, I, I don't know that we have the money to provide you. So she, she quirks an eyebrow and uh and she's and she says um a, a little bit a little bit more quietly i noticed that your wall was in disrepair from the window of my carriage are you sure it went into the repairs oh uh, very, very sure mid lady with respect countess um the Attacks for the fire touch have actually been growing more frequent in the in the past few months. Um, that uh, that damage you actually see is uh, fairly new, and as you can see, there's not a lot of trees or other resources we can call upon uh, to rebuild. Yeah, I don't appreciate you implying that my captains don't do their jobs well. They've been on this wall with me long enough that I trust them to maintain to the best of their ability. She ta she takes a sip of her jinka, and then and then a, then a bite of the insect steak, making making sure to uh to to not ha to not show any bad manners by eating with a mouthful or anything. Um, so there is a bit of a silence there before she speaks again, and uh, and, sh and and she replies, "I do not mean to offend, but if the but if these attacks are becoming more frequent and if they are becoming stronger, then 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 you would then I would recommend." And forming an alliance with the with the nearby holdings. He takes a very deep sigh and oh, I wish that were possible, but unfortunately nobody seems keen on sharing any kind of responsibility across lands. Every time I bring any of my fellow barons a note. They either pass it off to their count, pass it off to my count, or send me a counter where they essentially invite me to some sort of fancy banquet to discuss matters. They never just give me an answer. Yes, you can help patrol. Yes, I can send spare resources. They don't, they, they just want to celebrate surviving the wall every other day. It's a waste of money. That's where you should be going if you want money. As you can see by our spread, we don't waste our money on such extravagancies here. Hmm. I see. Uh, she, she, she's going to take a moment to think because, uh, because this is quite a predicament after all. While you you're can't. thinking, the Baron's going to start just shoving food a little more aggressively in his mouth as if he's trying to rush the meal. Well, I could, I could, I could, I could promise an alliance with with my own holdings, and I have, I have an, and I have two hundred men I can spare. But you will have to pay first. Unfortunately, I have obligations to the Order of the Torchbearers that I cannot ignore. We have... Okay. We, we can export chitin and, and food. Chitin can be used for... can be used to mass-produce armor and weapons, which you will need to be repairing constantly if I understand correctly. They can also patch the holes in your walls if we get a large enough insect for it. 
I do so raise what you're telling me is I need to give you the money I use on my defenses and hope that you return to bolster my defenses on my behalf with my money. Is this how I'm understanding this scheme? That is, that is correct. Because 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 as because I'm sure that you're I'm sure that you haven't figured it out. Reputation is everything for for for, for us nobles. That's the reason why they hold their balls and then show off grand displays of wealth. Even I find it a bit wasteful at times. I prefer to spend the spend those resources trying to find solutions to problems, new medicines, uh, new new ways to create clothing, food. But others sim others simply want to forget that they're that they're living in this world. <laughs> um, Baron Ardell's gonna stop eating for a second dust off some crumbs on his shirt uh, Countess I don't think I, I understand what you're trying to say but I don't think you realize exactly how bad things are out here I, I feel like you've spent too little time in the planes to understand exactly why giving you my money and hoping you'll return with help doesn't set well with me. We're very self-sufficient out here. As I've said, I've helped other nobles just to have them turn their back when an attack came because they were too afraid of leaving their holds slightly under defended. Um, I've just assume you've never seen a fire touched face to face, smelt the acrid ember of their breath, seen the searing coals of their eyes as they appear to just... It'll make you shudder the first time you encounter one. Uh, you could ask either of my captains. Um, your first encounter with a, fi with a fire touched, you wish to be your last. And it never will. At which point, the door to the room bursts open. A bloodied guard stumbles in. Raise, raise the alarm. We're, we're under attack. As he slumps to the floor. Um, I immediately jump up to attention and uh, pull my bow out. Uh, Bathrow will do the same, but drawing his, his sword and shield, and he'll, he'll kind of like herd the Baron away. Countess, you may want to take shelter. This is going to get out of way. Uh, immediately we'll... upon everyone doing that, the Baron will grab his... Uh, I picked a <laughs> hammer for this guy's weapon, didn't I? Or was it an axe? Let me double check. Yeah, he'll grab his war hammer, his longbow and arrows, and his shield. He'll turn to the Countess. Um, stick with us. We'll get you to my quarters. You can hole up there with my wife and daughter. Let's um, go, guys. Yeah, she, she... we'll go and check on the fallen sentry. Okay. Maltai is very clearly to be shocked by this. Completely and, uh, dead. <laughs> uh, uh, is, the, is the other building out the same way we came in? Correct. Okay. Um, uh, Bathro will take the lead. And. Well, not to be an insensitive guy, but does he have any weapons on him? Uh, he I'm does. Here. He is likewise armed with a short short sword, short bow, ten arrows, and shield. I'm grabbing his arrows and his short sword. And okay. just, right. I just stick the short sword in a belt. All right. Maldoy uh, is going to stand up a few moments after everyone else. She was not as prepared for this as they were. <laughs> yeah. You begin hearing screams from outside. by Atar. What is that? That is what I was just discussing. An attack. Stick with us. You'll be safe. Bethrel, lead the way. Uh, right. Ruprecht, you follow behind. Keep a close eye on the Countess. Yes, my lord. I, I am, we are heading straight to my quarters to ensure the safety of my family. Alright. I am uh, 
I'm I, I'm go I'm going to take out a uh, a, a radiant. It's a uh, it's a form of currency in this world. It uh, it shine it, it shines with light. Light has been a form of currency for the past twenty years, brought in by the torchbearers. But it has some other properties that make it useful. And she and, and she's essentially going to brandish that like a weapon, um, like gripping it tightly in her palm. Uh, as she uh, and then she follows with the others. Yeah, so All right, once we so. get moved out there, Bethrill goes first. I'll follow up behind. Then we have Matai and Ruprecht, okay. and Orion. Orion will pick up the end and kind of stay as rear guard. I was just about to say, Orion can go rear guard. <laughs> All right, everybody go ahead and give me a initiative roll. Initiative roll. Ooh! I uh, rolled twice. I got a one. I Dirty think. 20. Okay. Starting out strong. Ah, Had to okay. miss three attack. Let's see, you're playing... Oh, Rift. really? Got it. Uh, let's take my second roll of one, just because I think it's more thematically appropriate. Okay. <laughs> oh, please, after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone in this room was not prepared at the first sound of trouble, it's you. Yeah. I'd, I'd prefer to just take that than the first roll. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like none of us really did well. I did. All right. Rupert, oh, well, you can lead the way. Well. Okay, um, so we're just going. Are we already formed up or what? I'm gonna gonna take a moment to put some food in the oven. I'll be right back. Okay. Ah, they're real to each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna knock an arrow. Um, again, we're already formed up, or is it like right as we're reacting. Right as you're reacting. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I just gave the order. You move however you feel necessary to fulfill um, my orders of get us there. Which door did he come out of? The bottom left or right? Uh, came out of the bottom left, so towards, like, the front. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep my distance from the doorway, but just step over here and see what's going on. Okay. Can I see anything right now? Uh, only what you can actively see on the map. Okay. Ah! So there are some fire touch rats. I have returned. All right. Um, where where from, do you see the, the rats at? Uh, to the left. From like, both directions, like our, our... you're hearing loud chittering and uh, kind of slobbering um, along with yeah. metal hitting in the flesh and screams. So, like, out, out the entranceway that she came in originally, that's where I see him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Does it sound like rat men? Ah, they're just within short range. I was going to say, rat men are not something the Baron is familiar with fighting, so that'll take him by surprise. <laughs> so, I will draw my bow. Uh, do I have a clear shot at any one of them? Um, either one or four. Okay. Well, Since we'll they're start. basically direct through the doors. Well, we'll start with one then. Right. First attack. Ah, that will be a 21. That will hit. Okay. Uh, D is six, I believe. Because yeah. it's short, though. Oh, right. I probably wow. hit I am rolling really well for this session. Uh, that'll be a uh, six on the die plus two, so eight. All right. Um, you hear a loud squeal as it thunks into that uh, fire-touched rat's side. Um, it was not expecting that. Um, and other rats begin swarming forward. Okay. Uh, four fire-touched at the entrance that I see. 
just to warn everyone else. All right. Um, actually, yeah, I'm gonna say, uh, use the table to barricade the door. Okay. Uh, no, we're not barricading. I gave orders. We got to get to my family. Oh, that's right. We're mm -hmm. charging. That's right. So like. Go. Tactical tactical wit is not what my is in my mind right now. I'm not looking to protect us. I'm looking to protect my family. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. Oh, hey! Why are touch Noel that I didn't see? <laughs> that is his action. That is his action. And you hear from behind you and, and somewhat see a fire-touched uh, gutter knoll come slamming through the back door. Um, while he sees you, he ducks off into a room just off to your right. You hear the slam of a door and the scream of a woman and child. They're on both sides. Okay, so just so we're aware, which way is my family from here? Uh, to the right. They're in the main bedroom just off the kitchen. Oh, gotcha. so where they just ran in. <laughs> yep. That's why I wanted to make sure this is where they are. Well, that didn't last long. <sighs> yeah. All right, that brings us to Captain Bethrith. Uh, so he's going to raise his shield and hearing the scream, he's going to immediately charge at the nearest thing in that direction. Okay. Which I'm guessing is Fire Touch Null 4. Correct. Okay. So he's going to charge quite literally using the charger feet. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, and on. Oh, no. I, he's got to use a bonus action to charge. Never mind. I can't rage yet. Um. So we're just going to go ahead and attack. Uh, have to remember how to do this now. Hold, please. You are actively connected appropriately. Okay. Uh, a short sword. Not like that. Um, I'm going to go wow. ahead and I'm just going to burn that inspiration on that first first go. Cause okay. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. <laughs> Respectable decision. You do hit. To be fair, we're already we're already home, so go big. There we go. Seven damage. Uh, so that's an additional five from the charge. Okay. That is nice. Fours. That makes it twelve. Got it. Uh, uh, so he comes charging in, stabs it, and then his sword's kind of embedded, so he just like just front kicks it back to okay. pull his sword out. Um, it it grunts in a bit of pain. Um. And as you pull your sword from it, you see this slight gout of fire that then dribbles out as the blood uh, begins pooling to the floor. The knoll is lava. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. That's your action bonus action movement. Any additional movement? Uh, nope. All right. Uh, Baron Ardhel. Right. I think we all know what I'm about to do. Something reckless. Yep, I'm going to charge right up next to this thing to get a look in there and see if my family's okay, but I got to get through these guys first. Uh, so you see the first one, the one behind it, the door is actually shut. Okay, so I can't see into the room. Yep. Okay, then I need to kill Fire Touch 4 so we can get in that room. Mm-hmm. Okay, I will s charge forward, um, raising my shield and bringing up my uh, warhammer. I'm going to run in and then just like big heavy swing at its face. All right. Just like use the momentum of my run to just nail it as hard as I can. You guys are on a roll tonight. That is a hit. Awesome. Now, we'll check what fighting style I took. Been so long. Because yours actually matters. <laughs> yeah, dueling. So, 
but I already have that added. Three for that. Yep, it's already added. Okay, then let me roll that damage. Eight damage. Nice. Didn't kill it though, did I? No, it's very heavily. No, watch the close raid. It is. Um, it looks like it's on its last legs worth of damage. Um, it's breathing heavily, uh, looking at you like it is going to grab on, bite, and rend as much of you as it can. Good luck rending. I just cracked it across the jaw with a warhammer full tilt. <laughs> I can rend with its claws. Yeah, but good luck using its jowls. Had to have at least injured the freaking jaw. Oh, great. Getting attacked from all sides. Oh, wow, they are speedy. Hmm. <laughs> He probably dashed in me. Correct. Okay. Well, I know what I'm doing on my next turn. <laughs> Guarding our rear? Um, yes, but uh, um, more importantly, uh, getting them to the bottleneck of the door. Well, upon after hitting him and seeing them sort of coming up that door, I'm going to scream, you know, Rupert, Oiram, protect our rear, don't let them in, and point at the guys over here, the fire-touched rats to our left. Just to respond, yes, Baron. All right. Yes, my lord. A rat comes rushing in and goes to nip at the Baron. Luck. Don't sit. Okay. <laughs> that is a miss. I gotta be a little arrogant. I'm level one. I'm practically invincible. <laughs> Another rat comes in tr attempting to do the same thing. My lord, do not be roostery. I don't think about that. They have pack tactics. They need to advantage that. <laughs> that took me a oh. moment. <laughs> don't matter. Uh, I got a shield uh, and experience on my side. You know what they have? Numbers. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah. he plinks off your armor. Right, he does. And then the last rat comes charging in behind him. Uh, brings us to Matai. All right. Nothing. Good day, sir. Now, <laughs> if I, I know that they're fire touched, but 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 if I were to draw energy from the coin that I'm carrying, could I? hurt them with burning hands um you've heard tale that fire doesn't seem to work very well on them okay it otherwise it does be a great for burning damage hands. them but not as efficiently as most things hmm okay well she's uh she and she's she's going to sort of circle around the table and with all of the all of the hubris of a level one wizard uh, get right about here <laughs> <laughs> oh that's oh. a good statement <laughs> <laughs> um and then stupidity oh yeah <laughs> and and in that moment she realizes that uh it, it's it, it, she's probably not going to make it through this. So and so, and so and so so she opens her hand with the radian inside of it, and she closes her eyes and she and, and, and she says, "I call upon I call upon the power of the light to ban to, to banish these creatures of darkness." And then and, and then she clenches her fist again and pumps it forward, and fire and fire sprays out into this cluster of rats. Probably one, two, and three. Okay. I think Rat 5 is probably going to be fine. He does have a bit of cover. He, he does. All right. So I'm going to pull up all the things I need to do in order to make that happen. I think that was uh, shift click. Correct. 
All right. Okay, and give me just a, a moment to make sure that these are all appropriately taking the damage on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think resistance is fine. It's still a lot. Yep. I, I also like the idea of, like, because you've never really fought a fire touch to your, like, fire, fire, does that hurt him or no? Let's give it a try. <laughs> Like you're trying to recall memories thinks, from book reading, and you're like, "Eh, give it a go. What's the worst that happens?" She thinks it's, it's she thinks the name is derived from the coloration. Well, it, it's more it's more like she has way too much faith in in the power of of the of like the coin and and the light that she thinks it is going to punch through anyways. Ah. Uh. Yeah, um, all the all the hubris of a first level wizard that's never encountered a real fight. I <laughs> am not getting any targeting here. Uh, are you clicking on yourself first and then control left clicking on them? Ah, I had asked if it was shift click. Ah, uh, sorry. All right, there we go. I didn't even catch that. Okay, well that well that explains why it was not working. Okay, get burning hands up. And cast it. Hmm. A jerk. Huh. All right. Uh, the one closest to you that uh, had been shot with an arrow uh, drops to the floor. It, it's um, kind of scaled, uh, lava stricken exterior singes even further. Um, it emulsifies into a small pool of lava blood mixture. <laughs> um, Rat 3 seems to take a, a goodly chunk of damage out of that. Um, squeals out in pain. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can see this um, kind of blood lava fire mixture gout from its mouth as it seems <laughs> to be preparing to return the favor. Okay. Should have taken Shield Master. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do we know whether these things tend to explode? Uh, from what you guys have seen, the rats do not. Okay. So. You just breathe fire, because that's so much better. Thank you for specifying <laughs> the rats. All right. <laughs> so, <still comfortable>. uh, <laughs> so after that, um, she's. And she's actually going to return back to where she was because she realizes that her bravery is not doing her any favors. The better part of Valor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and she's going to try to, like, uh, she's going to try to get behind chairs, furniture, or whatever. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Oyrim. So the family is in this kind of room off to the side of us here. Or... Yep, with the double bed. We've been ordered to cover their uh, cover their rear. Yeah, where <laughs> Matai attacked is where I ordered you two to defend. Unless you want so... to ignore my orders, I mean it's up to you. No, I'll I'll move down into the doorway, or I guess right adjacent to the doorway. And on my way by, I will, I'll tell the countess. My lady, uh, please uh, get to the Baron. <laughs> uh, I love that you, you, even though we told you it was a joke, you stuck with it. Uh, I meant the other doorway, ah, the one on the left. Yeah. yeah. I'll try my best to get there. Who hired the Italian guy? <laughs> What's an Italian? <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I have for weapons or. Uh, short anything. sword, short bow. Your attack actions are plus five, four for the short bow, plus five for the short sword. Okay, so I'll take a swing at this. Uh... None of these have been damaged except for whatever the fire thing was. Uh, two is damaged, three is damaged. Five is not. Okay. I'll take a swing at... Uh, I think three the is the one, one at that my... was preparing to fire back, too. Yeah, the one at my, like, seven o'clock there. Oh, right, two? Actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Has you dice, or do you want me to roll? Uh, I don't have anything with me, so yeah, if you want to go ahead. All right, can do. 
And I don't have the FGU in Uh The roll was a three, making it an eight. <coughs> Would you like to use your inspiration? Yeah, might as well. Okay. Much hey, better. That is a 21. Oh, yeah. All right. Poking it for a total of seven. Think of that, do you feel the thing? <laughs> it, it definitely squeals in a bit of pain, um, rearing back momentarily before it uh, kind of braces itself to jump at you. Uh, any additional movement? Um, no, I am going to do my best to be in the way of this door here. All right. Uh, brings us to Rubric. Okay, so you said number three looked like it might be getting ready to uh, breathe fire. Mm -hmm. And having been on the front lines long enough, I would know that that's what it's going to do. Uh, you know that they don't fully breathe fire, but that when they bite, um, a modicum gout of flame kind of uh, singes the wound shut. Mm. Excruciatingly painful, um, does internal damage at the same time. Oh, so it's going to hurt itself to try to hurt us. Uh, internal damage uh, to the person that's bit. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, I am seeing what's happening. I am first going to uh, fire at uh, number three. Okay. Um... And since we've established that... Uh, uh, eight stone hit. That is correct. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Smoke them, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> okay. Uh, 21. I'm sorry. 17. Don't hit. Yeah. 17 will hit. Oh. Okay. Um, seven damage. That's on number three. Yep. Uh, he squeals out and dies uh, okay. also converging into kind of a pool of blood and lava okay at which point i'll switch to uh my shield and short sword and join oirum okay in guarding that and i will adjust my ac accordingly all right that is fire touch gutter null one comes Charging up and attempts to first spear Oirum. That was incorrect. Oh no, they cast Bless! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try rolling the attack before we roll the damage. That's critical. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Oh no, the gas plus <laughs> <laughs> for thirteen damage. Um, you can see as the the spear tips into it, um, a, a gout of that lava springs from its kind of hands and wrist area, traveling down the sphere and igniting where it touches. Um, Oirum gets blasted back several feet and crumples. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Boy, it's a good thing he's not a main character. Uh, <laughs> not good, this not death good is for permanent. me. I also think he's, like, dead dead. Not like, currently. It's like giblets spray everywhere. Okay, because I only have 12 scoots. HP, so what the heck? <laughs> he then scoots in a little bit and uh, turns to face Ruprecht. And Please don't. <laughs> comes in with that large maw dripping bits of flame. Uh, that is a dirty 20. <sighs> Hitting you for a total of 7. Only a por small portion of that was the actual fire damage. Should have taken something else. Because <laughs> defensive duelist still wouldn't have done anything there. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, Noel 2 comes rushing in. I mean, this is supposed to be a total crap show for us. So. Yeah. Yes, but uh, it would last a little bit longer. <laughs> it doesn't help that they're rolling really well. The rats weren't. And Goodbye. doing another four damage to Rupert. 
Did he attack? He did, with the spear. <sighs> then coming in with the bite. Oh, I see. He just didn't declare it. I uh, hit with a 15. Wow! Wait, wait. Uh, we know I, like, I like to use silvery barbs on that one. Okay. Uh, um, that'll be the first time that we're using that in this new campaign, so please read. All right. So, as a reaction, which you can take when a creature you can see within 60 feet of you yourself succeeds on an attack roll, an ability check, or saving throw, um, you can magically distract that creature and turn its momentary uncertainty into encouragement for another creature. Tr the triggering creature must re-roll the d20 and use a lower roll. I can then choose a different creature that I can see within range, including myself if I so chose. And they have advantage on their next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw that they make within the next minute. Okay. So. Let's hope you miss now. Is a miss. Yeah. That, so, um, that fires that's, off, that's, and as he's reaching in to do the bite, turns his head just slightly and snaps over your shoulder instead of actually biting into you. Yeah. The way okay, that, good. Because I'm, I'm. The way that that manifests is, uh, it, it, she just starts, uh, like pr basically gibbering like the same way that gibbering mouther would um it, it, it's just incredibly disorienting for that particular creature okay. um let's see is ruprecht gonna live eh, whatever i'll give him advantage um, anyway. depends on how he rolls for his next three attacks <laughs> uh, in which case i'll give advantage to myself charming <laughs> <laughs> Um, further screams happen from the the room that you guys are next to. Um, they sound in desperate amounts of pain. To, yeah. to the south or back up to... No, no, the... the, the where Art Hill's uh, Baroness gotcha. and Child are at. Okay, because I'm about to get surrounded. <laughs> so... All right. I, mean, I just need to get through this fire touched and get in that room. Uh, the fire touched null four comes swinging in with the spear. Is he not targeted on anything? He is just targeted on Ruprecht. Well, either way, an 11 is not going to work. Yay! Uh, goes in for the bite. No. Uh, hits with a 23. It's supposed to be on Ruprecht. There we go. Uh, it does nine damage, um, and you feel that immense amount of pain as a massive wave of fire gouts around you um, as it's biting into you. Profanity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And the big guy coming in. Well, at least I'm going to die through the pack leader. <laughs> I mean, dying holding sorry, off... sorry, pack a lord. Yep. Dying holding off the big bad guys is an honorable death. It I, is. I, I literally held them off by six seconds. <laughs> uh, swings and a hit with a 23. Seconds. Really? You roll the dice to do a single point? Oh, well, I, I, to be fair, I... I Insisted I roll a lot. So, okay, so he exceeded my uh, hit points by half my hit points. Um, so, <clears throat> he used the glaive? Correct. Okay, so I'll say for flavor, he just impales me at the center of my torso and kind of lifts me up just to, you know, add insult to injury. I'm just gonna. <sighs> try to reach it with my short sword, but I just don't. I can't. And as <laughs> and you're just, doing that, he walks you backwards. Okay, and my last words are Run, my lord. And using his uh, last action, he'll just pitch you off to the side. <laughs> as you Save do. It. Saving you for later. <laughs> I mean, you gotta get me off the skewer. You know. <laughs> He's got more things than skewer. I mean, I, I mean that that null just put you through a wall. <laughs> like, hey, maybe I'll last more than more than a round. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring us to Captain Bethrill. 
Okay, so Captain Bathroll's eyes just go very, very wide at what he's just witnessed, and then he gets this intense, like, calm on his face, which is him raging. Okay. Uh, how do I apply that? Just click on one of the uses of it? Yep. And I think you need to target yourself. So let's uncheck that. Uh, untarget oh, there. yeah, target I'm still there. targeted on the knoll. I mean, it's no big bear rage, but no. I'd rather you not make them rage. Yes. Uh, you won't like them uh, when they're there we are. on myself. If you open up the little uh, magnifying glass, yep. there will be an effect button. Uh, okay, so just click the effect. Yep. Uh, got it. There we go. All right, so he's just going to start desperately slashing at this knoll in front of him. Okay. I don't know why I closed the sheet. That was dumb. <laughs> 19 is a hit. At least I took two out. That knoll crumples. Uh, in doing so, you can see that its its body is attempting to recede similarly to the rats, but it has more structure to it, so the process is slower. Okay, I'm just going to shove it out of the way and open the door. Okay. Um, you find that the, the going to open the door, it seems to be barred. Got it. If you'd like, you can make a strength attack to tr or a um, strength check to try and bust your way through. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, doors are chumps. <laughs> I was going to say, if you don't break it down, I'm about to smash it with a warhammer right on the lock. <laughs> so I get advantage on that, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. So let's go advantage, skills, athletics. I love how it says status dying, implying that it gets saving throws. <laughs> 14. <laughs> All right. Um, you bust through the mediocre um, bit of wood that Ardhell had. The poorly maintained <laughs> door that I pay so much money for. <laughs> um, inside, the scene is too gruesome to describe. The knoll, however, yeah. turns slatheringly back towards the door, covered in blood. Trying to make it his own. All right. Uh, he's just going to look at Arthel, kind of out of the side of his eye, and step into the doorway. All right. That will bring us to the Baron's turn. Uh, I think it goes without saying. I lose my crap. <laughs> um, you rage involuntarily. Cain <laughs> access to a feat I don't have. <laughs> uh, completely ignoring all the enemies next to me, I am going to just charge past Bethrel, and as I do, I'm going to say, "We'll talk later." Um, very aggressively as I sort of push him out of the way. Okay. I'm going to charge straight in there to kill the thing that just killed my family. All right. The rats will attempt to nibble at your feet. Yep. Ankle biters. <laughs> uh, the first one misses. Ooh. The second one misses. You make your way in. Make a wow. Way Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's great when they you have the high AC, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> so I am going to, I've got him targeted. Yes, I do. Let's hit him with everything we have. Oh, if ever there was a time for a critical. 15 still hits. Yeah, but it'd be nicer for a critical. It dice would. don't work. Dice don't work on theme, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, at least you're alive. <laughs> so let's smash him 
right in the face. He takes it unhappily, but takes it. Yeah, I, I crush his blood soaked jaw. Just smash him. Then, because I plan to fight this thing for a while, I am going to use my second wind as a bonus action. All right. Must be nice. I've lost <laughs> just enough. Because <laughs> I want to stay in this fight just a little longer. Yeah, that was my plan too. <laughs> I'm not salty about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> you had to give me the lowest armor Hard class. <laughs> His men only have leather and a shield. Ooh. Full hit points. Back. Max heal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was just rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Max <laughs> heal. Brings us yeah, to I... the fire touch strat too. Sorry, you were trying to say something? I was going to say so. Yeah, I've got to smack him with the hammer in the jaw, basically dislocating his jaw. Set myself back. Take a few deep breaths to calm myself. And then just spit on his face. And that's my second wind. <laughs> is spitting in his face. R real quick, is Oirum down? He is. Oh, he's dead. Okay. I, that's a pretty point. He's, dead. he's not quite dead. So. All right. This rat does not get pack tactics. Uh, but we'll hit with a 19. Yes. No pack tactics against the person literally wearing cloth. Uh huh. But does seven damage. And already dying. Five um, Yeah. Okay. So she goes unconscious. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, so, so so essentially it bites her, and her face just goes pale immediately. First time ever taking an injury. Um, she goes into shock immediately. Um, because that, that's a lot of blood that's leaking out of her. Um, and she, so. she just faints. It hits the ground. That's why you don't use fire, stupid. <laughs> I, I like to think that you've just discovered a newfound passion for funding the expedition. <laughs> what are these things doing? Why well, haven't we well, done something sooner? Well, um, she has. Uh, to, to be fair, my history. my fire did in my fire did a lot more damage than some of these swords are doing. Yes, but I still killed two of them. So Rat 4 comes in at Captain Bethril. Hits on a 25. Ooh. These are very skilled rats. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they were built specifically to kill a level 1 party. No. <laughs> no. He does 7 damage. It's not like they were built for that, but uh, the overwhelming numbers just ensured it. And did it apply the reduction correctly? Uh, do, it says partially resisted, so I would assume so. Okay. Yep, because you've only taken five. But it did five. No, it did seven. Yep. Oh, I see. And rat, two, or rat five comes in. Hits with a 24. For another eight. Uh, rat six cannot scurry around Captain Bethrill, so targets him instead. That is critical. <laughs> Oof! Doing 12 points of damage as it just rends, uh, leaps up and rends a chunk of your midsection out. Uh, which immediately cauterizes. Oh, oh yay. You're not going to make a mess of my floors. <laughs> yay, the bleeding stopped. <laughs> no, no, I think they're going to do a pretty good job of that on their own. <laughs> well, you have one round to get two kills. And the rat will miss on Artel. You might actually do it. <laughs> You think I can stand up to like 13 enemies? No, but they haven't the hit you so far, so. Yeah, so far. 
Uh, but we'll hit with a 24. Corsi. For 8 damage total. Look, I always said it was possible, not likely. Brings us to Matai. Uh, death saving throw was a success. Oh, it just, uh, just automatically rolled? Yep. Which brings us to the room. Why don't I get this? They, they must have added that recently, because mm -hmm. they never used to do that. Uh, so I, am I, I, I at just zero hit points? Correct. Or... I'm, if I I'm, get a natural 20, I swear to God. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just going <laughs> so... to, I'm just going to assume that I went down so quick that I'm not even supporting to that. So Pretty they're just going to move on because they assumed I just died instantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This for, would be for a little bit of just... heroics, can, uh, can I use my uh, chat roll for heal a character? Absolutely. Uh, is Oiram not out of the fight yet? No, he is not. I wish I had chat Let's points. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if he was posting chat more often. Well, fair, fairly... I mean, he didn't really get to do anything. Everyone else has gotten a moment of heroism. He sort of just got him slapped out of the way. That's also fair. <laughs> What's your six? <laughs> uh, so we will come back up to your roll. Find rubric. Open you up and uncheck that failed saving throw for the moment because we weren't there yet. Oh, no, he already opened me up. <laughs> all right, Oyrum. You uh, find yourself right. laying on the so, floor. What's Several that? Uh, fire touched gutter knolls next to you. And then we got the then we got the big guy, right? Yep. I, I assume he's probably pretty strong, but what's what's my strength score? Uh, you are classed oh, off the basic warrior, so strength of sixteen. Strength of sixteen. Alright, I will... So I assume he's gonna probably stroll in and, and roll everybody. Pretty well, much. Um, your class is fighter, right? Mm-hmm. Second wind would probably be a good idea. That's a bonus action, right? Yep, correct. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, while I am doing that, I'll, I'll kind of make like a Super Saiyan yell. <laughs> Five episodes later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, that gives you another um, six points back, so you are back to full. Oh, nice. And I will uh, make a grapple check. Oh, on, on, on no, or the no lord, the no king. Yeah. Oh, he got a promotion. Awesome. And I have 16,000 points to waste on, on getting an <laughs> All right. Uh, that is a strength check on your side. The roll of a 19. Uh, that does grapple him. So uh, as you reach in and, and start that embrace, this thing is much larger than you are. Mm -hmm. um, it is just kind of holding its glaive out and looks down at you like you're hugging it until you give that squeeze and then it's like uh. me having been killed by him watching <laughs> watching Oyram hug him I'm like <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you see before fading to black is Oyram stand I, up and hug I mean, him <laughs> my next goal might be natural one so yeah <laughs> all right uh, brings us back to Rupric. You had to say it, didn't you? <laughs> I already failed my roll, so like I got a I got a seven before. That is and correct. Not, it's not like I have that. two turns in the meantime. <laughs> it's just funny you say and watch that, you get a one and you I'm get just saying, one. I'm just saying. I'm just He already had me roll a seven. Some heroics to uh, Rupric as well. All right. <laughs> oh. Give him a chance. Guys realize like all right. The They're imaginary points. Okay, just 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 roll with it. <laughs> tragedy has to happen, man. Yes, yeah, it doesn't have the, to happen right away. As right. you were kind of flung off to the side, um, you splashed actually into that uh, barrel of water, which seems to have brought you back to to consciousness. 
it, it, it counteracted some of the fire damage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now I'm drowning. <laughs> And okay, if I hold my breath long enough, they will alive. Stay. There is no failed saving throw there. Yay! Are you a fighter? Sink and wind and get in there. <laughs> is it my turn? <laughs> it is. Get up get up there and die like a real Well, I'm going to hold my breath first in second wind. Okay. Uh, wow! Well, actually, um, I rolled a 10, so I'm up to full. Okay. Nice! Yeah! We've been crushing the second winds, if nothing else. Okay, so so back up to full strength. I'm like, <sighs> I leap out of the barrel and come down on um, the uh, no leader. And because he's grappled, do I get advantage on this? Uh, that is a good question. It's been a Let's say I do. We've done grappled. Because this will be like the only time I get to attack him again. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna kill me in one shot. It, that's, that, that's the face facts. Uh, let's see. Grapple the creature's speed becomes zero, and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. Uh, the condition ends if the grappler is incapacitated. The condition also ends if an effect removes the grappled creature from the reach of the grappler or grappling effect, such as when a creature is hurled away by the thunder wave spell. Can I get pack tactics? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if your your liege lord had hired kobolds instead, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to roll an attack with advantage again. I miss it. Well, alternatively, I can I can tell the Rupert to get to the countess. You do think yeah. I'm just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and take an attack of opportunity. That's, that's well, he's he's grappled. He he, he can't have opportunity attack. Uh, it doesn't uh, say anything about stopping that. His speed becomes zero. Doesn't uh, that's, that's have entirely up reactions. To you. He also has reach, so you know. My that. feeling is that if, if somebody is grappled, then they're not aware enough to stab somebody running by. I will give I mean, him he... disadvantage on the attack. <laughs> nah, I'm pissed. He scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know TV. you. Uh, okay. guarding, guarding your superiors has gone out the window. This is vengeance. <laughs> this is guarding my superior. I don't know her. Uh, this is survival. <laughs> the last order I heard was guard the rear. I'm guarding the rear. <laughs> All right, 19. Uh, on the no, no, lord, no lord, we'll hit. Okay. I was, I was doubting it for a second there. <laughs> Which I think was your intent. <laughs> Not at all. Well, good thing I took uh, Duelist as my fighting style. So that's uh, that's five damage. All right. Doesn't seem to phase him much. He's still staring at Orgrim like, why are you hugging me? <laughs> He's very confused. Okay. You see but, a uh... stick, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You sure you don't want to make this your main character? Stop. <laughs> I'm here to avenge you, my brother. <laughs> You're playing Luigi now. It came from a different hold. <laughs> I think we're right. all green. No. Um, uh, so, uh, but but since Oirum is grappling him, it wouldn't make sense for me to head out there because he's got that covered. So I'm going to stay in this room. Okay. That brings us to Fire Touch Null 1. Who will be poking at Oirum first. I love how dramatic my re entrance stuff was, though. That should not be a thing, so we need to. Advantage? Yep. Remove the. Well, it was the same roll either advantage. way. It was both. It was double tens. <clears throat> so either way, the roll is 10. That will work, but we still need to get rid of the. Uh... Also, don't they have pack tactics? They surprisingly do not. Hmm. Oh. All the I would laugh. But that, I would laugh, but that would be ironic. <laughs> uh, they they got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Yeah, like uh, steering people. Yeah, yeah. like that. <laughs> All right, so it comes in exactly. with the small damage of six, and then attempts to bite you from off to your side. Also, I love how I have a gaping hole in my chest and so I managed to... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, hits with a 16. 
for another six. Um, you are feeling heavily wounded. Oh. The second one trots in and scoots past you if you would like an attack of opportunity. Absolutely. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> Actions. Short sword. Not sure why that doubled. You're still focused on the other one, probably. Uh, that's why. Uh, if that was the Null Pack Lord, you would have hit. Um, but you did miss on the Fire Touch Null. But the Pack Lord's easier to hit? No, uh, the difference between a 17 and a 2. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> like, why is the pack lord easier to hit? Now that that's how he shows dominance. First yeah, <laughs> comes into skewer the baron. That was almost a twenty, and then follows it up with an attempted bite. Uh, seventeen. I don't believe that hits you. Nope, eighteen. Okay. Uh, that is then going to bring us to fire touch three. Attempts the same. That is a crit. Mm. Mm. Dropping our good Baron. Ooh. Yeah, I'll lift the Baron. That was oh, hurt. oh, my lord. Time to avenge. <laughs> oh, die trying. Uh, that brings us to the Pact Lord. Who will first try to dislodge Oirim using a glaive. Hits with a 19. Does 12 damage and makes you fall. As you Am I the last man standing? Uh, currently. As you slump yeah. away, he turns towards Ruprecht. A smile darkening his face. Uh, hits with a 16. No, because I use Defensive Duelist, which raises my AC by 2. Okay. Boom! Then take back that 11 damage that I just did. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and then he will come in with the bite. That's critical. <laughs> For 10 damage. Still up? You are. Uh, Captain Bethril, you have a success on your death save. Uh, I actually would also like to use 2,000 channel points. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and spend. Uh, so seeing my my lord get taken down, uh, Bethro is going to stand up with one last defiant scream and try to stab uh, Gutternol 2 in the back. Sounds good. You are back up. You only have five wounds. So let's go ahead and short sword him. Nope. You you slide in, but the the process of standing up and making the attack, um, even with his back somewhat facing you, you, you feel just kind of weak. You, that rage of yours has subsided. And that's all he's got. Just one one last failed attempt to avenge his lord. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Baron. You have a success on your death save. Bring us to Fire Touch Rat. Uh, I want to do the same thing because I want to get vengeance <laughs> on the guy that killed my family. <laughs> all right, make that spend. Yep. Yeah, this gonna, is what this I'm is really what out of so many of these points early on in this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done after that. I just wanted one one more cool moment. Yeah, the heal a character, right? Yep. Jokes on you. I've been saving them for a while. Uh, it's not giving me the option to redeem for some reason. Do you, do you have channel points? I do. 21 29.7k. Oh. Wow, you've had even more than I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it won't let me for some reason. Should I just pay two force re-rolls and get it? 
I wonder if it's a... Ah, it's out of stock. Oh. Only allows for three in a particular period of time. How do you run out of... How do you run out of stock? Uh, it's a setting within Twitch to make sure that uh, this doesn't become ad infinitum. Oh, uh, okay. Because that would get ridiculous. Darn. <laughs> Darn, man, I don't get... Do I not get my vengeance? You do not. Yeah. The gods oh. are the gods are just like yeah no no we're done it's okay oh, well. I have a feeling oh, well. we'll here later that is a good possibility <laughs> <laughs> spoilers <laughs> All right comes in with the bite but misses it's just I was just going to say it'd be funny if I after seeing all this just get up with one last uppercut to that thing <laughs> uh, comes in does hit. Uh, I can't. Nine. I still can't believe that 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 rat took out like e even with my hit points, <laughs> wiped me out. <laughs> like, it didn't even breach zero. It's just nope. I'm knocked unconscious. <laughs> uh, with everyone unconscious, the scene I'm fades. Being... I'm not unconscious. No, you're not. Ah, you're no. not. Okay, we'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Would it be my turn though? Uh, not yet. Maybe. Ah, rats. You've got, like, <laughs> three, four rats to get through, and then a lot more. <laughs> How are these rats this skilled? <laughs> Pack tactics. <laughs> oh, rat right. tactics. Now, as I said, with the party unconscious, the scene fades to black. We find ourselves looking for my words back at the campfire um the scene fades to black we see a corner note reading day nine we find ourselves back at the campfire with ard hell finishing the story of how he escaped that situation uh I you finish purifying the food yeah i'm basically just like very much downcast sort of staring at my uh hands as I sort of twiddle my thumbs telling the story and then after finishing I get up say I'm gonna go eat by myself for a little while before you do and that I the... walk away so I, I just lean over to uh um hell yeah and I say how do you know about the party wasn't there for I, 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 I choose to believe that it was uh, expert embellishment. Strange. <laughs> I don't know why that hit me so hard, but it's just such a good trope of movies. It's just like, how do you know all that? <laughs> you were in another room and dead. <laughs> well, obviously, the way I'm telling it, my guys got up from the dead and continued fighting. MVP! MVP! <laughs> I mean, if there wasn't uh, some embellishment. But before uh, the Baron walks away, uh, Helia kind of grabs his arm and stops him and turns him back around. She puts a flask of beer in his hand. She says, You've had enough bad ale, my friend. Have some good ones. He smiles politely, nods his head, and walks away okay. to go sit by himself for a while in brood Edgelord style. <laughs> and does Matai finish that story? Um, well, uh, I was um, I was knocked out for most of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, but how you guys ended up being the only survivors. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I wanted to toss that to you as well. I was like, after okay. the whole death of family talking, he just wants to be alone. Of course. Yes. So, um... The, the ones uh, that are dead, we need to make sure. Uh, I, I, I must admit with some embarrassment that I may have panicked and passed out after the first bite. And so I was relatively unscathed whenever I when I, whenever I came back to I suppose. Inside check. <laughs> oh, okay. Um uh, you you would know that she's actually telling the truth. 
Um, but uh, but 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 she uh, continues on. She's like, uh, the worst that happened was that. But the worst that happened to me was that was that I had a hole in my dress, and it was quite expensive. But after I was up, it had appeared that the that the fire touched had moved on. Maybe they only maybe they only came after us for sport. I don't really know what their goal was, so I searched for survivors. Unfortunately, the two brave men that had tried to defend me and and their baron didn't make it not n- none of none of my medical sk- none of my medical training could uh could have prepared me to bring them back from the dead yet that is unfortunate but the baron was alive just barely heavily wounded i bandaged him up and and wa- and watched to make sure that nothing ca- nothing else came through the door. At which point, you all continue through your own individual stories throughout the night, waiting for uh, dinner to be prepared and available for you. Um, that, each piece, will come back to at a uh, later junction point. Uh, once the stories finish up and as you're eating dinner, um, the page check names Limius um, wanders over uh, my, my lords my ladies um, the, the the forward scouting group has, has reported a structure less than a, a day's travel um, to to the to the west the the, the, the good lord um, Baron Aloysius Gregor w- wanted me to let you know that tomorrow will be very important that was it, that's very interesting so, so some of the so some of the old structures still stand, yeah. or does yeah, this belong they... to the fire touched? Um, the 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 scouting troop said that it it looked like an old tower. Well, twist my granddad's beard. This is good news. At, at you saying that, I just kind of look at you like. Yes. Um, that that is very good news. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. On hearing him approach after he says that, I sort of come back to the group, and right before he leaves, I just uh, pat him on the shoulder. How old is he? He is only 13 years old. Whoa. 13. He should be married by now. (laughs) (laughs) You're not getting any younger, kid. (laughs) They are cheaper to hire when they're young. And that's so, why he's a page. Yeah, because my daughter was only 10. I'm going to pat him on the shoulder, look down at him, give a very sad smile and say, you're a good kid. Pay attention to your parents and go give them a hug. And then I'm going to sort of they aren't push him here. together. You should leave and go find them. Uh, I I, I can't. If I abandon my duty, uh, I'll be, be flogged and, and, and put to death. Yes, as well-meaning as your message is for this young Duty age. will kill you, kid. Remember that. You owe nothing to those elitist, noble pricks. Uh, Don't let them do you rolls her eyes and, so, and, and uh, pulls out a book and starts writing in it. Uh, as you're saying that, he he has this very confused yet a, a pretty obvious look of, aren't you a lord? I'd Just like don't to point out that this statement has not been verified by the local CLEO office. <laughs> Rick was also thinking the same thing, he, but he's just looking, observing curiously. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of just just go, kid. As uh, soon as you can get out of this life, leave. Oh, Staying okay. on this wall will only lead to misery. Um, yes, my lord. Seeing the page, does he have anything uh, broken on his person? Did I see? 
Um, not Only really. He spirit. doesn't have much on his person at all. He's essentially wearing um, uh, kind of hefty reinforced sandals. I uh, certainly hope robe, his stuff isn't broken. Um, and I mean, like, is, a, a is his belted sash? Ah, uh, well, is, is that torn? Uh, it doesn't look torn. Uh, it does look dirty. No, but my dress is torn. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> I take a minute, uh, if I may, uh, uh, Lady Matai, and I uh, spend a minute, um, I extend my hand, and out of a uh, a little, uh, um, an opening, com uh, an opening opens out of my uh, palm, and you see sort of, it looks like dust, kind of comes out, and it starts to uh, slowly, um, Resew your dress, and hmm. um, after after uh, that is fully done, it uh, it returns to my palm, and then the uh, the opening closes. Before that, uh, for that minute, Eve it starts. She says, "Yes, you may." Okay. I, a a, uh, a simple a simple mending spell, is it not? Uh, you can call it that, I suppose. Um, my form actually houses uh, numerous uh, miniature nanites that uh, can perform certain functions, such as repairing uh, broken material. They can Could also uh, form, con form constructs of uh, my choosing. Mm. I would I would like to take notes and, dis and, and discuss and, and discuss your properties while you while you perform your task. Oh, certainly. I'm not familiar with these nanites. Could you go into more detail? Um, think of them as, well, I am a construct. As Think of them as smaller constructs, although they do not possess uh, the ability to uh, self-motivate. I must, uh, for lack of a better term, instruct them on what to do. I see. So, the, so, so they are so they are sort of like house elves, but they don't immediately do what you want without you asking. What is a house elf? Um, we folk. Uh, they 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 take care of they take care of things. I you definitely are, wait, I definitely are, don't have any of them. It, I was under the assumption that you were human, but you said we folk. Yes, uh, I'm. I believe I am. I, I believe I have uh, uh, encountered a colloquialism that I do not understand. I would ex I would explain it, but some things can be insulted, but but by, by the more technical term, so I choose not to use it. I see. Very well, and I continue to prepare the dress. You'll you'll <laughs> have to excuse Grit. He was. Born under a rock, quite literally. Well, I didn't. At least start that's where we found him. Really? Yes. I have. I have noticed that uh, Grit is very unique. I had yeah, I've I ha never I hadn't, seen another like him. I hadn't wanted to pry into his origins. Well, uh, that's a lie. I have wanted to pry into his origins in in much much detail, but I felt it was rude to ask. Oh well, there's not, not much to pry. We don't really know a whole lot. But I appreciate the consideration. Of course. We sort of found him while we were mining a few years back, and he sort of lived in Hammerfall with us ever since. Yes. There's much I've learned. Much, uh... Much, uh, um... What is the phrase? Um... Arts and crafts, I believe some call it. Um, I've actually gained proficiency in quite a few tools. Really? Yes. Uh, I actually rather like uh, building things and fixing things, as you can see with your dress. Well, I, I don't think I don't think I would mind w working with you on a few projects in the future, of course. Right, r right now that tower is good. It, it, it is is looking like our highest priority. Oh, yes, but 
I would, I believe I would enjoy that as well. Mm -hmm. So, I take it we're going to uh, rest up for the night and head out for the tower in the morning? Is yes. that our plan? Okay. So, assuming go through, everyone else tells their stories that night, we move on to the next day, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So just wanted to make sure I'm on the same page as everyone else mentally here. Yep. So as that particular scene fades, um, the note in the lower left reads, uh, Day 10. Um, Curseland's okay. expeditionary, exp or rather, exploratory operation. Um, yeah, I'm going to wake up, because uh, I'm Eladrin, so I only sleep four hours to begin with. So I'm going to get up early before everyone else and sort of do a, just a patrol around the camp and make sure nothing happened overnight that needs tended to and okay. start putting up, basically fixing up the camp with everything that isn't currently being used by a party member. Start packing stuff up so we can leave as soon as everyone's awake. Okay. And I'll assist. Uh, about an hour into doing that, um, a goblin comes wandering over um, wearing a kind of what would have been white but is a very exceptionally dirty um, kind of set of cook's clothes sands the hat hey uh, you're up early uh, I brought you some biscuits uh, Thank you. right you were Emil correct I thought so um Thank you for the meal. Uh, if you could, um, prepare prepare something for everyone else. They should be waking up anytime soon. So. Oh yeah, I got the the real fixings starting to work its way up right now. But uh, since you was up early, I figured you you could use yourself some biscuits. You're already doing some stuff. Oh well. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to grab a biscuit myself, and then I'm going to hand the plate to uh, Grit. Just sort of like, I, I do you, do you Oh, eat? Um, I do not require food as organics do, but um, I can use the raw material to uh, repair myself if needed. But as it stands, I am actually at full function. So I will bring this to everyone else. Okay, I mean, you can't just, like, chew on it for effect. I could, but I would serve no purpose. It would make me feel more comfortable if you ate something. I, what I he's just... saying, Tin Man, is he doesn't like eating alone, and I got works to do. Oh. And he wanders oh. off. I just look at the biscuit. Look at you. Break off a small portion and kind of awkwardly just kind of start chewing it. <laughs> Do you feel better? <clears throat> no. No, that that was horrible decision. Forget this conversation even happened. I cannot. It, it, it is <laughs> in my data <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm just going to take the plate back. Yeah, it it, ta it takes a little while for for uh for Matai to wake up because she's not used to actually traveling on foot or um fighting or running from things or exploring the wastes. Yeah, I was gonna say what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask uh Grit, go get Helia. I'm gonna go deal with the Countess. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, basically I'm going to just sort of call into your tent. Just you know, sort of like a count countess, countess, it's time to get up. I have some food for you and then I'm going to just put it on the ground and slide the plate into your room or into your tent basically. So there should be a half spilled plate of biscuits on the, <laughs> on the ground next to you. Thank you. Thank you, Baron Ardhell. Just I, Ardell. I am decent. And I will have taken the, the uh, um, biscuit that I did pick up and still in my hand over to 
Hell yeah. And, and a half chewed biscuit. <laughs> I, I took like a, a little, a little bit of it because again, I didn't see any, per, I didn't see any function to it. So I just did it to satisfy you and it didn't work. Yeah, so Hel Helia comes out of the tent clinking with her, her full mail on and ready to go for the day. Um, Would you like a biscuit? Oh, thank you, Crit. I, I, I do love one. I do apologize. Uh, our Dell insisted that I have some of it. Even though it, I, it was not necessary at this time. <laughs> Don't put this on me! <laughs> he, he knows you're a robot, right? He said it was for his own comfort. So I obliged. Well, if anybody needs a little bit of comfort, it's that one. Well, to be fair, he hasn't known me as long as you have. All right. Sharing breakfast. Please do not resist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are being fed. Please do not resist. <laughs> All right. Since, since, since the Baron is not going to enter the tent, Maltai comes out with part of the food that was on the plate, seeing as it spilled onto the ground, and she's not going to stoop <laughs> below. Uh, and it, it, she's not going to stoop to the to that to that point where she'll literally be eating off the ground. I mean, this is bad enough as it is. But she comes out with a plate, and uh, and she she she's e she's eating the biscuits with a bit of the gravy. Yeah. Uh, upon seeing you exit, I'll go. Uh, if you want to go help the food, the real food's coming up here in a minute. If you could go help them set it up, I'll break down your tent for you. Thank you. I will <laughs> see. I will see what I can do to help. And Excellent. she, uh, and she, um, holds the plate in one hand and opens up the book in the other and walks off towards, <laughs> towards the, towards the food tent. When you get yeah. there, you can see that, uh, double check names. Baron Gregor is already there. Oh, Countess, how are you doing this morning? Did you sleep well? I was... I slept, I slept well enough, she says, closing the book. She had gotten through about three paragraphs. Ah, oh, good, good. Did, did, was the uh, bedroll comfortable enough? I'm finding mine very lumpy. It serves. We all have to make sacrifices. Oh, of course, of course. We'll spend more money on the next uh, expeditionary force. Absolutely. Of course. But 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 we but we didn't want we didn't want our our resources to be burned up or stolen by creatures. No, we no, aren't entirely sure person. how intelligent they are yet. But you heard the news. The page brought that to you. Yes. Ah yes, I did. I did hear about it. It is, it is very good. It has raised my spirits. Wonderful. I don't know. I'm very much looking it, forward it to your plan. As, we, as to seems how that we are not tech. wasting our. Well, well, I and I would I would like to I would like to scout out the perimeter if that has not been done so already. We do, we do not know what is living inside of inside of that structure. If these creatures need to live inside of structures at all. That is true. That is true. I leave it all to your capable hands. Very well. Do we and do, and do we have a cartographer here? Oh no, unfortunately that that could not be brought along for this particular trip. Um, but the the scouts did report that it was at least a two-story structure that used to be a tower. Um, they didn't mention whether or not there were uh, any any creatures living in or around it. Uh, so I can only assume that they they didn't see any at the time. Of course, they are scouts, so one can only understand that. They may not have uh, been able to do the best of jobs, such as us nobles do. Well, it, well, even so, they brought us good news. That, they, that they, 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 they should they should be commended for it. Oh, of course, of course. I've written them personal recommendations. Uh, they they will absolutely be on our next foray. Uh, that Very said, good. I do believe breakfast is ready. We we have uh, a few of the sausages available this morning, uh, primarily for the nobles. Uh, should you enjoy some? I would, I would enjoy. Some. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you very much, Baron. I will and make sure that Emil brings some over. Helia comes clinking in. Ah, hello, Master, M Mistress Gorf. How are you doing today? 
Oh, I got a crick in me neck, but otherwise I'm all right. No. Oh, oh, well, um, perhaps smoothing out the bedroll. I, I find that the lumps do not help. Yes, a, a pad underneath of the bedroll serves quite well, Baron. Oh, oh, I hadn't thought. I will requisition one of those the moment we return. Mm -hmm. The local CLU office representative, you can see them kind of sweating off in the corner. <laughs> mention of money being requisitioned. <laughs> a, uh, a smile forms at the edge of multi, of multi slips. Um. <laughs> All right, um, wonderful. Well, I will leave you two to your breakfast and, and uh, await your report. We will keep camp here um, a, a nice distance away from that. Uh, should anything happen, please just let us know as quickly as possible and we will send reinforcements. Very well. If we get a chance when I'm heading to the breakfast, if that Baron is still there, I'd just like a chance to get to him. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, you oh, can find uh, him in... Uh, Oh, well. there, there are essentially two different chow tents, one slightly better than the other. Um, <laughs> oh, he's he is he before ooh, if he's out before. there spoiling the good food for the nobles. He's about to get it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but before before he before he leaves the tent, Maltai says, oh, and and uh, and Baron. Yes, please, and please, please pay mine to to Baron Artel. He is a bit new to the lifestyle. Ah, understandable. That is one of the reasons why he was chosen to be part of this force. That and his combat experience. We understand that he has been out and dealing with these fire-touched for quite some time. He is quite possibly one of our most valuable assets. Mm, I will keep that in mind. Absolutely. Thank you, Countess. Thank you. Of so course. as I'm oh, entering in the background, just like going to town on a giant plate of food. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you may you may take your leave, Baron. Of course, thank you. And, and he turns so yeah, with if his I plate. if I enter the tent where the Baron is, how many other people are in there with him while he's eating the good food? Um, you find basically him, Matai, Helia, uh, and uh, Emil that are in that particular tent. Okay, as I come in and I see the fancy food. I just sort of stop, grip my teeth. I can't help but notice it's hard bread for our actual attendants doing all the work. Hard and bread? I no, did cookie, not real... cookie never makes hard bread. Who? Emil, did, did you make hard bread? Why would you make... And you see the, the goblin turn over and he's like, uh, no. Wrong accent. <laughs> wow. Uh, it, it, Emil's cooking is just fine. No need to fret. Okay. So I'm well, going to walk you. up to the I'm going to walk up to the Baron and go. So, how have you found your accommodations so far? Uh, well, as much to be expected in the in this sort of land. Um, I understand you're uh, quite the the experienced um, person in the the roughing it field. Perhaps you could give me some some tips. <laughs> yeah, the best tip I can give you is stop being soft and grow a pair. <laughs> a pair of what? Uh, we have per, no room the on this expedition. This we have no grew. room on this expedition for people that gain too much weight. And I will pick up his plate throw some extra of the fancy foods he was eating on it and say I'm going to take this to the pages doing your uh fixing your tent up right now. Well, you certainly And can. I'm going to walk yeah, away. Zone earlier. All right. It was nice speaking with you, Baron. This as is 100% the... a power play. Call him fat, <laughs> take his food. As the Baron walks out, uh Grid is standing outside and he says, "I do not believe the terrain is adequate to grow pears." <laughs> Trust me, that guy will never accomplish it to begin with. Uh, I, so zero Ma for a hundred percent no I campaign session I one. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, on the record, Mazai will be laughing about this about this exchange later. Just not in front of just not in front of her current company. Well, yes, I don't think anyone could grow pears in in such an environment. I'm sorry, after playing Draho as exactly this kind of noble for so long, I kind of just want to be a jerk to these nobles <laughs> at every opportunity I get. I remember, 
Remember, and just calling I, him weak and fat and then taking his food is just a power play that I feel I would have pulled on Draho if I was playing any other character. Uh, uh, so I mean, when when Draho does that, uh, Helly is going to stand up and kind of block his way. Um, excuse me, Ardo? That was a little bit rude, don't you think? It's okay. The Baron is just hungry. We 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 understand this with nobles. They they get a bit touchy like this. Plus, there's uh, an exorbitant amount of uh, food currently. Um, I can easily help myself to another plate of the same. I'm going to sort of very very subtly groan at his statement. All right, hell. Do you and have just any sort of just sort of look Helia in the eyes and give a very sympathetic like. Don't make me stay around this guy longer than oh, I have. Give me a moment. Say um, you're sorry and you can go. Ardhel, do you have any pointers for for Lord Gregor? You know, may, maybe anything that would help train him to be more of a survivalist. <laughs> Seeing Ardhel. that how he is not going to let me go and Matai is trying to politicize this comfortably, <laughs> I'm going to take the plate... Hand it off to um, Grit and say, Grit, can you take this out to the guys fixing up the Good Baron's tent? Yeah, sure. I am Grit. Yeah, I handed it to Grit. If Grit oh, wants to hand it yeah, off to you, that's... Sorry. Yeah. I was just doing it to Grit because Grit was right there and he's nice. <laughs> he's the kind of guy that would do that. Yes. Lord um, Gregor and, Ar and Arthur, well, would and you table. please sit at the table? And, and then I will Ellie. turn around, walk back to the table, pull the chair out and sit down dramatically, put both hands on the table and say, Good Baron, the best advice I can give you to, sir, to strengthen up for this terrain, every morning before you eat, get up early, run around the camp five times, stop, do 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, then run five times and repeat until you until you throw up. Yeah, oh, that's then, an interesting way to go about it. Then what I want you to do is go find some of a uh, um go find some of the uh page boys that work around here. Give them a stick take off your shirt and allow them to beat you with a stick several times in a row to toughen up your skin and harden you so that the ground doesn't hurt so much. Then come to the tent and eat half the portions you have been eating. It'll help put you in a better mood and survive easier with less food. When you talk about him getting effectively beaten, you see kind of the, the blood drain from his face. Um, oh, okay, I, I will certainly take that under advisement and, and add it to my normal daily routine. Thank you, thank you both for your uh, and for and for, and for your impressive skill at a co at compromising. Thank you, Artel. Um, your it, your input is is very valuable, and I look forward and I look forward to seeing Lord Gregor uh, and take th take this up. Uh, Gregor wanders back over to the food takes a single sausage, puts it on his plate, and then sits back down. Oh, yeah. And, and remember to add a biscuit. You'll need it for energy. Oh, I, I can get that after that. The, those are over in the other tent. Very well. And uh, she, she goes back to reading her book. I kind of want to see if he actually follows my advice. Like by level eight, he's just this ripped, <laughs> just oh, yeah. beast of a man that can take punctures like nobody's business. <laughs> and and Emil, how much how much of the more impressive food do we have in stock? Oh, we've uh, easily got about uh, <laughs> two months worth. Like we should um, be stocked up for the the first foray here pretty well. And what about the less impressive food? Uh, roughly about the same. It's all being split equally. Okay. This is just the meat tent. 
Um, if if you could, um, uh, an, I, I would I would like to see some see see some of that meat sent out to sent out to, to some of the workers. I know it's a bit unconventional, but I would like to see their strength up. And and and, ha and have the and have the uh, the poorer food also mixed in with the more expensive food. We're all going to have to make sacrifices here, and we are no different. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, that's why we've been doing it since the start. Oh, very good. Well, then I suppose you don't need my advice much. I Thank will you. certainly take it, Countess. Uh, anything else that you'd like on the, the menu, I'll do what I can to rustle up. Of course. All right. With hat with orders and politicking done, she um, tries tries to read peacefully. Okay. Um, once all the, the noble is exit the tent, the workers start mm. to fill in. Okay. Seems a bit more of a hustle and bustle with them in there. Okay, that's not quiet. <laughs> she will she'll move out and find a quiet spot where it's not exactly inside of the tent because it's already being taken down. But uh, she'll, she'll she'll read where 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 people can find her if they need her, but it's still somewhat quiet. Okay, uh, you find yourself a decent rocky outcropping. Ah, uh, yes. I can stare out into the lava pools, become inspired by them while I study my spells. They swirl with an interesting pattern that you've not <coughs> seen anywhere else. Well, I'll have to jot that down. Uh, about the time. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go. I was going to say, about the time that Matai leaves, Helia also leaves the, the tent to go find a quiet place to uh, commune with the ancestors and pray to Moradin. All right. Um, and uh, Grit is going to... Um, kind of casually just patrol the outside because he doesn't need so really it, once someone took the plate from him he's gonna just take a, a watch slash uh, be on the lookout for the unlikely event he spots like an herb just follow the singing of the nerd <laughs> <laughs> oh uh also um, he's gonna pull out uh Pull out uh, one coin, and um, he he actually uh, rigged it to uh, uh, on a loop, like play uh, um, the sounds of what he assumes is an ocean. Although since his awakening, he hasn't seen one. Okay. Uh, so as you're doing that and looking for herbs, we'll come back to that momentarily. Uh, Helia, what what do your prayers to Morden sound like? Um, mostly just asking for guidance and protection uh, going into whatever lies ahead in this tower since we don't know what's out in the wastes and hoping that there's some bloodstone down in the ruins to find um, at, at that sentence you, you feel a warmth kind of spread through you you'll be under the effects of a blessed spell for the next 24 hours Cool. Nice. Uh, great. Go ahead and give me a survival on the uh, herbs. Check. I don't think I'm proficient. Um, let me check. On survival? Yeah, that would be a survival check. Because it's like oh. knowing where in the terrain to look, although it's all the same. Oh, I was. I keep. I always forget nature is knowledge, not skill. Yeah, that's being able to identify it rather. <laughs> well, I mean, this would possibly be a perception check to even see one that's there but um either way it's bad it's it's uh it's a nine nine uh so you go rooting around for a bit um but only seem to find rock ashes um there there is one spot that looked like at one point it probably had root tubers with the way that things were grown out mm -hmm. um but you don't find any there um, you do note the impressions that they left. 
Uh, well, in the interest of uh, repairs, maybe for later, uh, I'm going to take the uh, fertile uh, kind of ground with uh, the obsidian and stuff like that and just put it in a pouch for later. Okay. This may come in handy. And at the same time, I'm going to be on the lookout for anything that might be approaching us. All right. Um, at this point, the scene will fade to black, and uh, the new corner reader uh, reads Day 10, Late Afternoon. First structure in the Cursed Lands. You guys are standing outside of uh, essentially a scarred hillock, um, just over which you can see uh, a small bit of the structure, um, kind of scooting towards the top but keeping yourselves um uh, less able to be seen if there is anyone there um the structure most definitely looks like it was a tower at one point um probably a variety or uh, uh, quite a number of um layers high uh stone that has broken down uh surrounds the two stories that are left um but it doesn't look like there's any active inhabitants, at least on the exterior. Uh, there is a door that is facing you guys. It is closed, um, but it doesn't look like it has been damaged or worn. So it may be something that is newer. Well, shall we try to signal our approach, or do we want to remain stealthy? Let's see. I will refer to Ardhel for this. Uh, you have the most. You have the most field experience. Okay, so just run by me again, Kedro. Exactly what I'm looking at. Yep. So I make sure I got the picture in my head clearly. Busted two-story tower. Um, somewhat fresh door. Uh, no windows, no smoke. Um, no view of anything living or that has done anything to the exterior. Uh, like all of the scarred land around it looks like everything else that you've seen the past 10 days. Um, but that door is, is kind of gnawing at you. Like it does not seem to fit. Like one of these things is not like the other. Would gotcha. There... Could I... Would that be possibly survival or perception to determine if I can sort of recall, or would it even be intelligence? What would it be to sort of recall if I can remember why that door... Like, the reason that door seems weird to me? What would it be? Um, Wisdom. Let's go with knowledge or history. History. Want for me to perform the check? Um, history. I am also um, proficient. Oh, I'm proficient in history. I'm just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll roll a spell. Oh. Yep, you all can. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm basically to help um, everyone else out with the check. I'm just going to start saying my thoughts out loud. Okay. Um, thirteen. But I'm also proficient. Well, woodcarver's tools wouldn't be the relative relevant tools to be carpentry. So never mind. Thirteen. Okay. I rolled thirteen. I do have expertise. <laughs> nice! All right. Uh, Baron, I, I will give this uh, agency to you. Why is that door different? What What does it remind you of? Oh, I get to de decide this? Mm -hmm. uh, shoot, well, it's newer than the others, than everything else around it. It doesn't look like anything has been through here recently. The obvious reason is it's new and nothing else is makes it suspicious, but I seem to recall once being on a patrol and coming across a uh, small hovel similar to this, and it had a brand new door, and the door was rigged to protect something. So it was like the building was specifically designed to protect, and the door was basically a booby trap to stop people entering. Mm. May I wouldn't I... say mimic, but that seems too obvious. May I add some insight to this? Yeah, by, by all means. Someone wants to help me come up with something cooler. I wasn't expecting okay. to be thrown on the spot. Maybe. 
Well, I, it, it, would appear, it would appear that this structure may have been a watchtower of some sort. Um, seeing, seeing as there isn't, seeing as as there aren't any other outposts nearby to to back it up, this 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 door may have been an extra an an extra layer of security. The logic is sound. Of course, yeah. of course, many of the many floors of the watchtower appear to have crumbled, so it no longer serves its original purpose. Oh, I know. If the door is so nice, this is even better. So the door is made of a material that's very durable. It's a longer lasting material. I've come across small amounts of it before. It doesn't seem to age or corrode like most other materials do, but I've never seen it in such large quantities before. It's always been like essentially pebbles and dust that I happen across. Um, and I generally would discard it as nothing. So it's a mysterious, it's a door made out of a mysterious material. Kedro can figure out the rest. That, actually, that um, sparks actually, to you even further that um, it's an ironwood from ancient times. Um, all of the watchtowers that were placed throughout the lands of Earth uh, were generally constructed with those particular doors, any of the bastions, most of the castles. Um, this would have been bef early in my lifetime that, it, like, the last age, late last age, was this a thing, or was this older than that? Older than that, pre-darkness. Um, okay, so it's something that I would have probably never seen firsthand, but I've heard a lot about. Indeed. When Gr I was Gr younger. Grave is actually going to pull up his sleeve and, uh, say huh i seem to be comprised partially of this material oh we should definitely so, go uh so so that collect. means that you must be a product of the era perhaps i think it would be in our best interest to go see if we can bring it back with us maybe they can analyze it back at the uh outpost and Maybe we can find a way to work it in, per perhaps use it in repairs for you or anything along the way. If it's the same material you have on you, well, it it's might be useful to you. Part of my structure is made of this, but I can probably find other uses for it uh, once we have the time. Uh, so, yeah, we such, a want it such, a such a material, such a, such a material would be precious. Agreed. Uh, the the. What, whatever this came from, I, I doubt it exists anymore. Yeah, so I think we're all in a... I'm just going to sort of turn. I think we're all in agreement we should go hijack that door and take it back with us. Yes. But of course we don't know what is beyond it. Right. We should we should, we should, we should see if this, if this structure is sound and there's nothing nasty or valuable hiding inside of it and then and then we then we can set then we can set some of the workers onto removing these doors is there a way like is it just like out in the open is there a way to approach it like with like limited uh, um, you could attempt to use kind of the the broken hillocks to moderately cover, but at the last like fifty meters, it's pretty much open ground. Okay, yeah. there aren't I'm going to advise that we let that we we use the hillocks as much as possible, and then once we get in position, Helia is going to make a beeline for the <laughs> door. Is it so? Like, is is it wide out in the open? Oh, very much so. It, it's an old-style okay. watchtower, so its job was to oversee the area. Does it have murder holes? Um, not in the two stories that you can see. Okay. That makes okay, me feel so happy. We yeah, approach so, so, it once Hell we're close going enough. First. Yeah, once we're close enough, hell you charges. Um, the th I'll stand back here, prepared to defend Matai should something attack us. You know this be some sort of ambush and grit you could sort of follow at a slower pace behind helia in case she needs assistance would that seem fair to everyone 
Yes. I agreed to this plan. <laughs> All right. Yankee general stands on top of the hill while the soldier charges forward. <laughs> um, I'll, in the meantime, I will pull out my, my shield um, and rest my hand on the thing on my hip uh, at the ready, but not having an aggressive stance because I don't see the need for it as yet. Okay. Yep. Uh, is Grit moving forward as well? Yes. Okay. Um, in cadence with Helia or slower? Um, I'll go up until I am satisfied that I'm within range, which will be 80 feet. Okay. And um, then I'll take a defensive position. Right around the point that you hit 100 feet away from the door, that piece on your arm seems to emanate a small humming sound. I will immediately stop. And you can hear that same sound off in the distance to the tower. Do I feel anything, or is it just kind of emitting noise? Kind of like it's um, a very slight vibration, which is making the noise. Wait a moment. Hey, hell you yeah. Stop hell yeah, or do you keep going? Hell yeah, you'll dig in her heels and kind of like try to stop as quickly as possible. Okay. She's basically at a dead sprint, however fast that is for a dwarf. <laughs> Over short distances, pretty good. <laughs> they are natural speakers. <laughs> oh. I'll, I will slowly move closer. So she'll, she's probably a good, like, I let her have a lead, but. Oh, and um, she'll also draw her axe when Grit says yeah. hold up. Okay. Okay. So then I, I'm feeling all the all the it throughout my body because I am comprised partially of ironwood. And I'll just I am vibrating. At least the portions of me that are of ironwood. What exactly does that mean? Um would I know? Um that's up to you. There is clearly a connection between the two. I do not know. Is it unpleasant? No, um, it it almost sounds kind of like a tuning fork, just out of tune currently. I'm going to move a bit closer and see if the pitch changes. It does. More or less on key. More on key. Seems to become Wait. more harmonious the closer. I have. I have an. I have a thought. Maybe maybe you are the key to that door. I believe this hypothesis is worth investigating. Well, let's yes. not stand out in the middle of the killing fields. Yes, yes I agree. That, is, that would be a technical <laughs> error. Yeah, I think Matai so, and I are going to follow up after you guys and try and get to the building now. Yeah, I mean, clearly clearly, the nobles are going to stand back and wait for, the, wait for the two brave ones to rush forward. And then okay. we'll uh, move I'll in. still maintain the defensive stance but I will move up uh, at the pace that uh, Helia is moving now. Okay. Um, as you close in on the door, that tune is harmonious, uh, almost like Tolkien Elvin singing in the way that it sounds. Fascinating. Um, and getting within about 10 feet, you hear kind of notching behind the door. Click, click, click. And then it slowly slides a couple inches open. And there, so, the scene fades to black. You can see the locals, Yelio, branch <laughs> representative, standing back with uh, Ardal and Matai, kind of scribbling in what looks to be a death certificate for uh, Grit and Helio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining someone, like, playing glasses of water. Like with their fingers over the... Very rings. similar, yes. But that is where we shall end this session for tonight. And we will pick Wait. this back up with what's inside the tower next session. I did not expect to find a connection to my story in the first session. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for coming and playing. And uh, to those watching, come on back, see us again. Mm -hmm. Bye now. <laughs>